Hey there, welcome to the season 2 of Stories of Modern Work podcast, where I discuss and learn from Office 365 users, consultants, developers and IT pros on how they use Office 365 as a modern work platform. My name is Jag Kakarlapuri. I'm the founder of Modern Work Group, where we specialize in building Office 365 business solutions and deliver on-demand user training to get maximum benefit from your Office 365 deployments. You can check out our website for more details at modernwork.cloud. Today, we have with us Stefano Tempesta and Chandra Ram from SXIQ to share Office 365 security tips for your remote workforce. Let's get into the episode. Guys, uh, thanks for coming on the show today. Uh, we've got uh, Chandar and Stefano back on to dis- uh, to discuss a bit more about Office 365 uh, and also general security tips around working remotely and anything to do with security. So let's take take it away, guys. Thanks, Jang. Thanks for our right. hosting again. And um, hello, welcome everybody. Excellent. Thanks, guys. So uh, I wanted to do this uh, so that it's easy for people to consume. Uh, we wanted to go from simple to, uh, you know, intermediary to to complex terms in, um, in in terms of security tips and so on. Uh, in 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 the time that we've got for this episode. So, uh, what I wanted to start off with, uh, you know, each one of us to actually share, um, you know, some, uh, you know, maybe two or three. Uh, tips on on helping people stay secure when when especially working remotely we'll uh, we'll start with you chanda okay thank you for putting me on the spot no i'm just joking <laughs> go for it yeah look one of the first things is it comes to i'll go to the absolute basic is ensure your wi-fi has a security password it's secured right you really don't want any strangers to be hacking around your stuff and then who knows that might just lead to your um you know organization's portal or whatever they, they, you, you don't want that to happen so one of the first things is to ensure it's your wi-fi is definitely secure and the thing is i mean look um it might seem a bit weird with the second one that i'm about to talk about is um it doesn't apply to me i only live with my dog and he doesn't give a crap about what I work on or what I'm doing on the screen, all that he's interested in is in food and uh, his walk time and then his attention time. So, but whereas others who have family members and stuff, I mean, you might have some instances where you might have to have certain conversations confidential, not that you don't trust your immediate family members, but still there are certain things that you do not want there's there's a level of confidential confidentiality with the things that you work on so that might be another thing to have some consideration on because if for as an example if you're dealing something with the department of defense or things like that i'm just making it up um yeah. you you just have to ensure that you know you are um uh you know taking care of those aspects and then What's the other thing that I can think of is, uh, yeah, I mean, look, uh, this is this is the phase where all of us are vulnerable to stuff. You know, you obviously I have for some reason my spam inbox in my email has just started to grow like crazy abnormally. I have never seen this happen. I don't, I'm not sure if you guys have experienced this, but I have seen it happening and also the fact that even in my uh, you know my personal office 365 tenant i am getting all sorts of alerts from office 365 admin center once yeah. again i'm not really sure if you guys have experienced this but i have started to experience but this is just that i've not had time to go investigate on what's really triggering that and stuff like that i know it's a dev tenant and not really using it using much but I'm not all that concerned, but still there are certain things to be aware of. So this is this is the time where hackers, it's like it's it's uh, it's a fun time for all the hackers, you know, uh, because everyone's connected, whether you like it or not, you have to be connected remotely 
And um, yeah, it's just one of those things. I think these yeah, are the immediate yeah. ones that I can think of. Maybe you guys can add on. Yeah, uh, definitely. No, no, like, no, you know, people, right. people are actually doing a lot of things at the same time. Uh, yeah. uh, we are quite busy, and it's easy for us to click on something on a very, you know, without really thinking huh, too much as well, right? So that's where that's where the attackers are trying to make money on. Really enough, I, I think I had an email and a message yesterday saying. Uh, this is from the Australian government and click on this link for your job uh, keepers Keeper. uh, payment or something like that. I'm like, oh my God, no way. <laughs> <laughs> Chen, uh, sorry, Stefano, you're, you're saying something there before. No, I was saying that's a sad spot on. Uh, you have identified uh, one of the major uh, sources of attack, uh, cyber attacks uh, and the vulnerabilities, uh, especially now with this talking around, uh, obviously, you know, the pandemic uh, and people hear about the government making you know, job seeker and other proposals. And then they say, hey, uh, got an email uh, from the government that is giving me uh, a thousand bucks a month. So let me click on it. Of course, I jump into that, right? Especially uh, vulnerable people that have been affected by some job layoff. And then I say, uh, this is uh, may sound like an opportunity, and instead is a trap. That I uh, wanted to add on. Interestingly enough, once again, is um, look, uh, we're all on the social media and stuff anyway. And then I saw one of the someone and you know. Uh, in a Facebook group posting a link saying, look, uh, here's an app that I've developed. Uh, it is called, I don't want to name it. Basically, that app requires the people to register their contact details on that. And then which means that basically the objective of that app was to go and help out your immediate neighbors if they are in need, like going to the supermarket, buying the groceries for them, giving it back and then so the neighbors or the neighborhood will have access to the people surrounding them and clicking on saying, Jack, Chanda, oh, these guys are close to me. Click on them and get some help from them. But interestingly enough, what the people who are going to be filling up their details on the form or on that app don't realize that they're giving away their contact details. And it's a bit scary. You know, you're yeah. going to give away your name, your phone number, your address. You don't want... You know, thieves to be knowing where you live and all that. It's a bit yeah, scary. Yeah. So this, yeah. I, and I've seen things like this pop up every now and then. Especially yeah, now. Uh, especially on platforms like Facebook, uh, yeah. hidden like a game, you know. And that's yeah. the thing that uh, not surprising me. Uh, every time there is something like uh, a data breach, we go and blame the social network. How many people have blamed uh, Facebook for the Cambridge Analytica scandal uh, no, uh, la last year? But the reality is that uh, who put the data out there? You know, you know, if there is this game that asks you to upload your face and see how you look like when you are old, they're capturing biometric information around you because then you enter your uh, your name, obviously, you enter your age, uh, yeah. you connect with people, with your family. And so they start building knowledge around you. And now this last game that you just mentioned, no? uh, where is the city where you were born? Uh, what is your favorite holiday spot? They sound familiar, right? These yeah. are exactly the same questions that you get asked when you enter the security questions to access your bank account or any other online system. They're collecting information about you, mask, masking this as a game just for the sake of having fun, and they know everything about you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and also they play on the emotional quotient as well. Like, you know, yeah. people's uh, at this stage, you know, people are actually sharing a lot about, co you know, coronavirus, COVID-19, yes. you know, number of deaths and all that stuff. Right. And WhatsApp, for example, uh, we have a group of uh, a group for WhatsApp for our engineering, uh, you know, mates. Like all of us have done uh, yeah. bachelors of uh, computer science engineering. Everyone is is uh, aware is a sound uh, yeah. is aware of the security practices and things like that, right? But still, in that group, I see people sharing forwarding messages with where you know links actually ask you to go download something and things, or it says that you know Woolworths is giving out an OCHA. And if you read the oh, wow. actually, if you have a look at that uh, uh, the URL. It, it can clearly call it out saying that it's not from Woolworths itself, right? Um, people 
are like you know though they are educated it's 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 really hard for them to to keep track of and keep that yeah. security practices in place so i think that's why we have to really you know stand on the rooftops and and start to shout that you know hey guys you know don't do that and i take every opportunity in that whatsapp groups you know pointing fingers back at them and saying hey you should stop sharing such links you know uh, please read before forwarding and 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 people are learning from that but you know it, it's amazing that how many people even the educated ones you know uh, fall fall into the traps yeah, yeah, Jack, the play uh, on the uh, social uh, part of it you know feel part of the of the group i want to yeah. contribute i don't want to feel missed out feel on the feelings so they play on the feelings as you said so there is this uh, emotion around now the, the the pandemic the coronavirus so if there is anything that can help uh, uh just uh, sharing without co- checking on sources yeah, yeah you're right may so, i add something jack sorry go for it yeah I was a victim of that Ulwards link. <laughs> <laughs> what did you buy? Tell me, what did you buy? <laughs> I ended up clicking and of course I didn't put my details. I was like, okay, uh it says answer the survey and then you'll get a $200 voucher as a exactly. pandemic thing blah 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 whatever. Then I was thinking, how will they even send it to me? They don't have my details and then I closed it. Then I yeah. obviously yeah, it was in a WhatsApp group, yes. And yeah. by the way, since you mentioned WhatsApp group, I thought I'll touch on this. uh i was on the phone with my family yesterday and then they said uh it's illegal to post share anything related to coronavirus on whatsapp in india uh i don't know uh you might want to check with your mates i heard that no one talks about corona put any puts any status messages about corona whatever on whatsapp it's illegal apparently so Because even if you're drinking your corona beer you're not allowed to share that about that <laughs> oh that part but uh it's all because of all this, all sorts of fake news that's coming up and what not yeah. and then they have it's yeah. now illegal yeah i don't know exactly about that from but i've read somewhere that whatsapp is actually the whatsapp itself across globally is mm-hmm. is curtailing the the spread of um, you know mass forwarded viral messages yeah. around around yeah. coronavirus to in order to bring down the the amount of attacks and things so having said that so uh stefano why don't you share your your uh, tips to keep everyone uh, all of us secure when we're working remotely but look it's along what we were discussing so this uh, technique uh, of getting into people emotions and asking for personal information is called social engineering uh, which is uh, not something new for that came out from no for for coronavirus it's something that has been in the practice for years and years yeah. and uh, especially in uh, in organization where there is uh, someone in IT that has sort of a, a position of power and uh, because they control systems uh, and and uh, hackers uh, basically impersonate this uh, individual this uh, some someone in a position of, po- of power and ask for information and you on the other end because you are not uh, properly educated or you're not IT savvy or simply because uh, you are intimidated by the position of power on the other end uh, just tell everything no so they just uh, call you and say hey uh, stefano you, uh, this is uh, your date of birth can you confirm and you say yes uh, this is your email address can you confirm yes and this is public knowledge everybody know that okay you no know, we have to apply this fix to your computer uh, can you please close the application and then they start chatting uh, and say ah oh, by the way in the meanwhile no blah 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 they make conversation they make you feel comfortable with them like they're not intimidating and then yeah. at the end I say, yeah. okay perfect i'm going to apply now the last patch of the operating system i need your password to uh, authorize the connection to your system because only you can authorize that what is your password boom yeah. you're done, yeah. you know yeah yeah uh, I, i got that similar side of all uh, almost like 7 uh, 8 months ago or something like that because yeah. something like you know we are from Tel- telstra and uh, you know we wanted to help you fix one of your malware and things like that and then and i actually hit back on them saying actually you know what i am a, a i am an it professional myself how about i help you fix your computer <laughs> <laughs> well done yes uh, uh, so n- never reveal your pin code a bank will never ask a pin code 
I don't even know that. It's encrypted in a way they can't read it and they don't need it anyway. So simple things, but you know, especially now in the context of this emotional situation, people want to help and they do it in, uh, you know, in good faith. I'm not saying that, uh, you know, so this is why you mentioned around uh, WhatsApp, uh, try to avoid spreading uh, the fake news uh, or because at the end they're coming from uh, a person that I know, I tend to trust even more, right? And they simply just fall for this. So social engineering is uh, my first uh, fear. And uh, you know, having uh, two kids, uh, they, they obviously play with tablet a lot. Uh, they will receive uh, a lot of ads. Uh, uh, no, need to be sure that they don't fall trap in, of this as well. That's actually uh, a good point there, Stefano. Yeah. Uh, uh, I've got I've got parental controls in my one of my tips as well, um, yeah. especially now that kids are 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 asked to be online for their studies and you know for group activities and things like that. I think parents need to take uh, the initiative to check all the parental controls are up to scratch. You know, security of of the kids' laptop or the tablet is is. Up, you know, uh, is also checked as well, uh, and 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 uh, we should educate the kids too to to be yeah. more um, secure online too. So yeah, and you know what, this should start also from schools. Schools now uh, are very IT uh, in advanced in some way to some extent. Uh, my my daughter has a, a laptop in school nearly every day. They do typing, they do some maths, whatever they do. So they should also teach uh, how to be, you know, uh, IT ready in some way or from a security perspective. Yeah, absolutely. And what's your third uh, tip? Uh, look, uh, the other thing we we mentioned a bit around the uh, emails, so the, 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 you know, the um, falling for a phishing trap. Yeah. Um, especially you know around promotion but also um, payment uh, or something that you have ordered online so there is a component of uh, social engineering that we mentioned that it comes from a, a source of authority playing with your emotion playing with your uh, desire to help the other one and there is a component that is called phishing uh, that may introduce also to malware you know so uh, uh, install these uh, uh, this uh, application or read this document uh, and which is, looks like uh, a PDF or a Word document that contains information about COVID-19 and instead uh, is something that you run on your laptop or on your workstation and they will just uh, install in background and uh, um, fish everything that you type for example. Yep. Uh, yep. So capture this information then uh, access uh, your uh, uh, contact list and send the same to your uh, friends, to your contacts without you even knowing. So this right. is the way a virus spread. A Especially on that you... And a real virus by contact. <laughs> it's a double whammy now. Exactly. <laughs> so uh, actually you made a point about uh, the phishing links, right? Uh, especially with the emails or even on uh, Facebook or Twitter or all those social platforms, you know, don't click on the links, you know, just don't stop and, and think twice before clicking on the links. Even before clicking on the links, if you just hover your mouse on the link itself, uh, it'll give you a preview of the underlying the actual URL of, uh, and if it's if it's if it looks fishy, just don't click on it. And you know, by actually taking a a pause before clicking on a link, you're you're actually getting a chance. Um, this is for you, by the way, Chanda, <laughs> to actually read the link uh, and 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 then make a decision on whether to click it. So having that, don't do click 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 and go and see. You know, um, I'll tell you why I uh, I felt prey for that. So it was in a WhatsApp group that I have my trustworthy friends and very rarely we forward any messages because that's only tennis related and we keep it just for like, uh, do you want to play tennis tomorrow or day after whenever? And then that's pretty much it. We don't keep any chattering in within that. And, and then you thought uh, for 250 guy, bucks you would go and get a tennis racket. And I thought, okay, <laughs> this must be legitimate. And then I ended up clicking on it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but exactly that, you know, because your circle of trust, Correct. Uh, you think that the information inside your circle of trust is trustworthy, 
Mm. And sometimes there is a weak point uh, that mine the entire trust uh, inside uh, right. your friends. So yeah, yeah be careful. Yeah. But look, uh, we are mentioning uh, a few of the techniques. Uh, we should mention also what we should do and, uh, you know, look at the URL, have a preview, don't click here. That's great. Uh, but there is also technology that can, can help on that. There is technology yeah. that the organization can put in place, especially now in the context of working from home. There is, a, according to me, a double responsibility for businesses, government, to uh, you know, enforce security also in a home workstation. So it's my own laptop, I'm working from home, it's my responsibility to keep it up to date with patches and antivirus, uh, for sure. But because I'm using my laptop to connect to a, a company or a government institute, or even to my school, to my daughter's school, uh, it's, uh, it's also their responsibility in some way to make sure that I am protected enough. So using technology uh, for uh, advanced threat protection, for example, uh, can help uh, uh, you know, prevent this from happening also for those that uh, may fall in this kind of traps. Yeah, absolutely. Um, especially, you know, using the technology, we'll, we'll touch base on using the technology in, in, in the later part of our discussion today. Um, and we'll talk about, you know, how ID admins should play a role in this as well and also uh, allow users you don't want to restrict too much and also you don't want to keep it open too much as well. You need to find that uh, the right balance. So we'll talk about that uh, in, 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 in a minute. Um, I just want to share uh, three of my uh, tips quickly and then we can move Thanks. on to the to the uh, the remaining topics for the day. Um, one one of my tips is use strong passwords and uh, stop reusing the passwords across your services, right? Uh, for you to do that, um, you need to use something like a password manager. You know, it could be last pass or one password. There's few of them out there, right? Um, go check it. If you're not using the password manager in this day and age, especially when you're logging to multiple services, you should, you're, you're already compromising yourself, uh, putting your, yourself in, um, yeah, open for people to, to, to uh, you know, um, attack you uh, from a security point of view. So yeah. uh, when I can, can I tell you something? An yes. Excel spreadsheet is not a secure password manager. <laughs> oh, Excel spreadsheet without even a a a, a password sheet, password protected uh, sheet. Or, Would uh, that work? or even <laughs> a even a folder on Windows Explorer saying highly confidential. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, and from an Office 365 point of view, and also not outside Office 365 perspective, highly encourage people to use multi-factor authentication. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. So, people think that multi-factor authentication is only for Office stuff. You know, this day, you know, you can do MFA for your Google, your Dropboxes, your, yeah. any any other service that uh, out there is, is going towards two-factor authentication. So, mm. use that. You know, I know it's it's okay. one one additional step you need to worry about, but it's it's better than getting breached and and losing your uh, um, in your privacy or you know money or you know even worse, you know people can come and stalk you as well. Um, and the other thing is is that you know with with a lot of people joining on remote calls, um, what you see is people actually talking in front of whiteboards. People talking in front of uh, their uh, from their living rooms or from their kitchen bench tops and things like that, and you actually see people uh, like you know post-it notes uh, or stick it like stick it notes behind with with passwords on them, or even sometimes you actually you know write down your Wi-Fi guest password and put mm -hmm. it on the fridge. It's a quite a a uh, widely uh, wide practice across a lot of households here in Australia, right? Uh, and people stand in front of of their of their fridge and have this on online conference call on a webinar, uh, like a public webinar that anyone can join. You don't know who is joining in here and watching your backgrounds and stuff like that. So just make sure that uh, what you got on your in your backgrounds uh, when when you're talking uh, when you're on remote calls is is you know is important. Uh, and Microsoft Teams actually has some a future like you know blurring your background for that. So yep. you know might as well use it. It's, so you it's actually a security feature in in a way if you think about it. Yeah, sure, man, it's actually a very good point. You raised yeah. a good point. Uh, I actually want to use that uh, and and do a bit of 
uh, you know, uh, hacking with you, with you guys, Chanda, because I've got a lot of stuff in there. Because, mm. you know, think about this. Uh, I know Chanda, and I can, from what I can see on Chanda's background, I can know that he is a AR Rahman fan, right? Mm. So it's more than likely that he may actually use a password with the word Rahman or ARR. And yeah. Um, yeah, and also you see there's a there's a uh, poster behind you which talks about 99 songs. That's the new movie uh, from AR Rahman, right? So, you know, you may have a, a password which says Rahman 99 or ARR 99 or AR Rahman 99 or 99 Rahman. So uh, you see, this is a sort of type of engineering that the attacks attackers can, um, mm -hmm. you know, try and do. And, uh, and 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 probably you know they succeed in their in in their in their uh, endeavors. I can guarantee you that none of my passwords are that. So, <laughs> I <am sure. laughs> but but I just wanted to give you a, a like a like a, a real time uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, thinking of how a, a how a hacker would uh, would 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 get some. Uh, yeah, yeah, but you know how many times we use uh, our kids' name uh, or uh, the last spot of holiday that we went uh, with some numbers in that. Uh, so say that I went on holiday to Byron Bay last uh, month before the lockdown. I didn't, but assuming uh, I say Byron Bay 2020, you know, <laughs> and uh, this 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 piece of information is so. Easily, easily sourceable on social networks uh, or, or chatting around. And as you said, also on these video calls, so maybe there is a picture of me in Byron Bay just behind me, right? And people can so, can uh, can try this uh, brute, um, uh, force, force no, yeah. brute force attack. That's right, yes. Uh, and uh, based on uh, information that they source about my profile. Good point. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Even even for I uh, do remember seeing something like you know Google releasing something like uh, QR codes to save your uh, Wi-Fi passwords, right? Instead of actually people typing in the passwords, yeah, you know yeah, you yeah. have your Q QR code on your fridge as a fridge magnet or something, yeah. and people can actually go and uh, that whenever you yeah. have guests come across, you can scan and get access to your Wi-Fi. So just imagine having that QR code behind you when you're talking on on a remote yeah. call with uh, on a public webinar. <laughs> yeah. it's it's, also, then Dad, it's it's quite easy for people to this, scan and, and and yeah indeed that's a good point actually and then the, yeah. here's another thing especially in the current situation that we are in uh you may have also observed that a lot of people are posting pictures of their office home office desktops and i'm also yeah. one of them yeah. right yeah. and yeah. that's that's also another avenue for the hackers when you think about it because you just mentioned this I had a self-reflection saying, okay, Chanda, you did this too. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah but even password or on a post-it just around your screen, yeah. you know, yeah. these kind of things. People don't realize because I, I, I'm the only one that has access to this until you post it <laughs> and everybody can see that. Yes, I mean, as I said, uh, I have started to get random people trying to connect with me on LinkedIn and whatnot and et cetera, et cetera. I'm sure you would have had the same too. And I put a picture of my desktop with all sorts of post-it notes. I don't have post-it notes at all, and my whiteboards are absolutely clean. So whenever you, I you, use you, it, you, I you do it. actually have a, a sort of like a board next to you. Probably you can write down your password so that it's easy for me to log in next time. Exactly. <laughs> so it's absolutely clean. And the thing is, I mean, uh, but that may not be the case for everyone. Not that I'm trying to justify, but yeah. it's just one of those things. And then because of these random connections happening on LinkedIn, Facebook, whatnot. Mm. Uh, there is a possibility. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, having Instagrams. So, say that, uh, Chanda, what is it? Including that? Instagram too. Yeah. Yeah. So people are sharing a lot of visual uh, clues, like, you know, uh, like Stefano said, you know, you go on holidays, you go to Byron Bay, you keep constantly sharing a particular yeah. picture or a particular area constantly that tells you a bit about yourself, right? Okay, he likes Byron Bay or he likes uh, uh, go for riding and things. So your password would be some, something like, you know, uh, you know, ride one, two, three years. I don't know. It's just, it's yeah. easy for yeah. people to guess. Yeah. So having said all of that tips, right, I just wanted to say, uh, 
uh, ask you a question on what should someone do if they are their credentials are compromised, especially in a in an office setup. Let's say uh, uh, one of my friends. Uh, this is actually a, a, a true story. Um, one of my friends' uh, Office 365 account has got hacked. So mm -hmm. uh, in that case, what should you do? Like you know, uh, uh, like an IT admin. What should what should an IT admin do? What what does the actual person should do? Stefano? Yeah. Uh, well, first of all, uh, um, stop using uh, your you know, the application or the workstation that has been compromised. Uh, don't open any any other application. Sometimes, uh, uh, you know, uh, a virus is just running there. A malware in general is running there on your laptop. And the more you use it, obviously, the more you spread it. Uh, the best laptop in the world, or the most secure laptop in the world, I should say, is the one that is uh, always unplugged from internet and uh, switched off uh, and closed uh, in, in uh, your drawer. So if you notice that you've been compromised and that your workstation, your laptop is uh, uh, not safe any longer, just uh, switch it off. That's yeah. for sure, because uh, at least you sort of block the spread of the malware virus. Look, it relates really well to this uh, pandemic situation, right? Keep social distance. <laughs> so lock down and close yourself. Then inform your uh, uh, IT, your network administrator. Just call them and say, hey, I noticed uh, this. Uh, oh, I click on that uh, and it went to this page. Uh, I didn't think about it. Uh, and um, no need to be sorry, that happens. Actually, the more uh, information you share, the better, because they can uh, also share this uh, lesson with others and prevent uh, others from happening. So yeah, that's what I will do. Shut down yep. everything and inform immediately my manager or my um, you know, uh, IT administrator to make sure that they take uh, any any action. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think I think that's a good point of of actually you know shutting down and and calling your IT right, especially from working with uh, working remotely. Um, back in the, when when you're in an office, it is easy for you to go and reach out to your IT or to your manager and tell them immediately on something happened, right? But now that you're working remotely, you may not have your IT person close by. So mm -hmm. uh, unless he's your husband or wife. <laughs> so yeah. uh, so. In that case, what you need to know is, you know, you need to have those critical emergency contacts uh, or yes. for people to reach out to in in a, in a handy location. Don't write it on your whiteboards or things like that. Maybe have it on in inside a journal, right? Inside a, a notebook um, uh, that is secure, and 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 that's why it is important uh, to have that information for people to go in a especially now that they're working remotely they need to have that sort of central location to have critical contact details or you know uh, critical information of what happens if something you know what you what what's the standard procedure you need to do when something happens like this uh, do you have any 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 thoughts on that uh, chanda yeah, just very quickly, I want to go one back step, one step back rather. Did your friend whose details were compromised, did he have MFA on? No, no. Okay. The, what he did, this guy, um, if this guy is listening to this podcast, um, uh, sorry. Um, he what what, <laughs> what he did down. is he felt, actually, he, this is this, this happens with others as well. He yeah. felt uh, ashamed a bit. He felt uh, sh uh, ashamed to call the IT because okay. he said, "Oh, I may in, I may be in trouble, or my job may be in trouble because my manager can get uh, angry about me." So he actually knows that uh, I'm an I'm Office 365 guy, and he re he actually called me, saying yeah. that. Hey Jag, you know my looks like my Office 65 account has got hacked. Uh, it's it's sending all sorts of uh, stuff. Uh, can you help? You know, there's nothing I can do uh, mm -hmm. in that case, and, uh, apart from you know teaching him how to be uh, more secure yeah. from then on. Uh, so I said, just reach out to your, your IT guy. You know, your IT guy may have a, a standard procedure on what to do in in, the, in yes. this case. So the lesson yeah. learned from that is don't feel shy. Like like Stefano yeah. mentioned there before as well. So there's nothing wrong about it. It's it's quite off. It's quite yeah. normal. Uh, this happens. You only learn from this. So there are there are 
there are features in Office 365 or any other uh, any other productivity software, any other IT system. There are features where you can actually your IT admin can jump in quickly, set things mm-hmm. up, clean up, you know, uh, reset your passwords, yeah. um, you know, uh, send out comms to the other members in the team to actually. Uh, you know, yeah. stop sharing emails, put some rules within yeah. their exchange online to stop the spread of that email or, you know, revoke emails and things like that. They can, there are, so don't feel shy, don't feel uh, threatened by, um, you know, by being attacked or, you know, in a, when, when you're at, when you're in a compromised. Mm-hmm. Exactly. I mean, I it, it happens. And uh, if it happens, uh, sharing this information will actually help the other ones from being protected because this can be a mass attack on your organization. Yeah. Everybody is receiving the same email. You just need one to fall. But if you, that one that falls for that uh, is uh, clever enough to inform everybody promptly, everybody will learn and prevent uh, you know, a disaster. <laughs> Yeah, the thing absolutely. is, I mean, um, I just I, I wanted to. This is a very interesting topic that you touched upon, Jack and Stefano. The thing is, I completely agree with you guys with all the tips that you just shared in terms of what you need to do after this happens. But the thing is, I, uh, I, 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 again, I want to step back one step again, saying there are, um, of course, we have briefly touched upon uh, some of the vulnerabilities uh, that provokes stuff like this i agree that, with that but the thing is some of the some of the things that i have learned it myself uh in the past and then i'm in ensuring that i i do that is um we all have multiple devices at home right and especially people with their families they with the kids they have what what you would have observed is or we might be doing that ourselves is giving away our devices to our kids to play just so that they give us a bit of peace of mind while we are focusing on something and we always have the habit of trying to checking our trying to check our emails and if we have an ipad we we have our credentials or emails and whatnot set up in multiple devices ipad air ipad 2 ipad pro so on and so forth and we are fully connected and we ensure that we are getting notified in any device that we have now the thing is obviously that's also one of the reasons you know, the kids playing with the iPad and then you know uh, for even accidentally if the parental setup is not on and stuff like that you know you're asking for username password and you have this cloud keychain uh, which has stored and boom enter the password you're gone right yeah. so those are some of the areas like it's 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 really scary when you think about it so in the past, I've always had the habit of, of course, look, I don't, I'm not married and I don't have kids. I don't have that problem. But the thing is, I do have one problem of having a lot of devices. The thing is, iPhone, laptop, work laptop, and then my personal three other laptops. In the past, I used to have work emails and stuff like that set up in all these devices. But yeah. I just decided that shouldn't be the case anymore. I mean, my work laptop, yes. And then my phone, yes. But that's pretty much it. My iPad or anything else that I use does not have anything to do with Office 365, absolutely clean. And I, that's the way I keep, I try to ensure that I don't compromise or I don't become, that doesn't become a reason to compromise the details. I don't know if that, uh, it's it's a bit of a thought, but I, I, yeah. I think that does work for me. Yeah, hey, Chandra, uh, this morning you went for a walk and yeah. you found a piece of device exactly. on the floor. Do you have the picture that you can uh, you can share quickly? Basically, if that device is not protected and someone forgot or lost uh, on the bench or wherever you found it, they could have access to a lot of information. It, it, it was a tablet or something, right? Or, or, or a small laptop Come on the beach or wherever you, you, you were walking and uh, someone may have lost or maybe it was stolen or whatever that, that happened, here it is, uh, vulnerability. Uh, because I, I was out on a walk, this is uh, such a cool thing that Stefano just, uh, now the thing is, I just have to, just give me a sec, share. And, and, and this brings to another point, Jag, you know, uh, yeah. say, okay, now what would you do if you lose something, if you lose a, a device? No, yeah. like your phone or something. Hey there, I can see myself. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Yeah, you got it. Boom. 
Yeah, that's it. Look at that. that. I found that on oh, just, okay. just outside the oval. And I, I took the picture and shared it to our chat window saying, look, this is the kind of stuff that you find when you're out on a walk. And for whatever reason, this was there. But who knows, man? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, yeah. It's a good uh, point. It's a good point. So did you did, did you did you did you pick it up? No, I didn't even want to touch it. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. You're right. Don't touch anything yeah. nowadays. It's better yeah. not to touch anything. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I think yeah. the government messaging is working, uh, Stefana. Yeah. <laughs> so, In a normal day, I mean, you would have yeah. picked it up. <laughs> so uh, going back to your friend's situation again, I don't know why I'm yeah. stuck with that. Is so what did the IT admin do? Reset the password or what What else happened? Well, uh, what I should know. ideally I, I, happen? I, I, I know? I Any thoughts you know, on that? It's just no. a very, it's a curious topic for me. Yeah, so uh, I, I didn't really know what, what the IT admin did, but, uh, you know, after after a few months, I asked him what happened, and he said uh, they, you know, said, it's not just him when he called the IT guys, it's not just him who got compromised. Uh, uh, their their organization didn't have the MFA sorted out, you know, they didn't have, they're, they're using too many, uh, you know, global admin access and other stuff. Uh, mm-hmm. A lot of their their people have actually got emails, and one of them actually clicked on it. Uh, like my mate has actually clicked on it, and it made it worse. So I, I don't know the exact steps that the IT admin did to to uh, to resolve that particular issue. Um, it again depends on a case by case basis, Chanda. Just generally yeah, yeah, speaking, yeah. it depends if your email gets uh, hacked. Uh, because I was working in a in a uh, I was work I was doing a project for one of uh, one of the large retail companies here in Melbourne, and while I was doing while I was on the floor, like actually working with the, with one of their IT guys, uh, they got compromised. So they they um, you know they said there's a lot of emails going through. Um, uh, I'm not a security guy myself, so I, I don't want to be uh, giving them advice on how to go about, uh, you know, managing their security rules and conditions, conditional access and things like that. But what we what we they, what we what we've done is we've jumped on a uh, uh, on a machine quickly, had a look at their threat dashboard to see where the threat has has been starting to in, initiated from, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. we've done some reports on saying that. Uh, using that message, we've got a message, one example, a sample message that's been passing. We took the email header of that and run some reporting on that email header to see who else have received the exact email um, and who have actually, um, uh, you know, forwarded that email or replied to that email and things like that. And then based on that information, we've made sure that uh, that particular email is not uh, transmitted anymore. And and uh, and reached out to those individual people to reset their passwords or to actually educate them on saying, "Hang on, uh, you know this email is actually a phishing attack. Don't click on it and things like that." Imagine, man, if your friend again was a global admin and he had lost <laughs> yeah his yeah. credentials. Imagine. So that's why you should don't have to, uh, you should never have more than two or three global admins in your organization. <laughs> and what again? The thing is, I mean. You obviously should have only your admin account as your global admin thing, right? You shouldn't have the same account that you use regularly also added as a global admin. Yeah, that's yeah, it. yeah. And this is actually is one of the principles of the zero trust uh, uh, framework uh, oh, yeah. uh, that securities are organizing. Is uh, there is an acronym for that? Is the PULP, uh, the principle of least privilege. So yeah. whatever task you're doing, you just need the right permission to do that and nothing more than that. Because That's if right. you're just changing something, you need the permission to do that one change yeah. and you don't need to have access to anything else. So yeah. just the yeah. least permissions to, to accomplish your task so yeah. that you're yeah. productive, but you're not limited. But at the same time, you don't need and you don't have more than what you actually uh, need yeah, yeah. To, to complete your task. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. that actually brings a good point, Stefano, is, uh, you know, uh, f- f- some years ago, like, you know, especially working with uh, providing consulting services for organizations, you had to do like as a Office 365 consultant myself, you know, for me to go and do a few things for my customer, I need to have, pre- you know, admin access. Right. Uh, let's say I wanted to manage Office 365 groups. Right. I need to if I want to do a, a report on Office 365 groups. Previously, you know, 
the consultants had to ask for things like, you know, give me global admin access so that I can yeah. actually go and do my stuff, you know. Um, and that was a widely, uh, uh, you know, widely used practice. And and now we should not do that, uh, especially now that Microsoft is actually giving us granular admin access. You know, there's a new permission called global reader access. You know, yes. you don't need to have a global admin access to go and do an audit or to go and review the settings. Instead, just use the global reader permissions. Um, Sorry. For it previously, in order for you to do anything with Office 365 groups, uh, you need to be like an exchange admin or be have have that global admin access. But now they've actually given us that least privilege access, like say group admin. You know, you only get that sort of permission to manage teams or groups and things like that too. So yeah, as an IT <laughs> consultant, we should be aware of those changes in that uh, in that uh, in that space for sure. Yeah, for sure. Nice Chandra, one. you're saying something before? No, I no, I said it, it's a nice one. I like it. Yeah. Yeah. For the global reader one, I actually was not aware, to be honest. Yeah. So it's actually yeah. quite new, man. Uh, it's it's only yeah. come up in uh, October last year, um, mm -hmm. and and also there's a few limitations with global re read permissions, re reader permissions. Yeah. You global reader doesn't give you really global reader. It there are yeah. certain limitations. So in that case, you need to ask for that additional permissions. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, yeah. don't ask for global admin permissions. Just ask for if you're doing SharePoint. Just get SharePoint permissions, you know. Yeah, uh, yeah. Don't don't go on about asking for global admin access. Sometimes customers have good uh, security practices, and they they will push back on you to say no, we won't give you global admin access. Um, you know, uh, and they'll they'll say come and sit with us, or <laughs> or uh, or there's you know, or tell us what exactly you want to do. Send us an email, and we'll do that for you, and things like that. Right. Uh, or or sometimes you know SMBs may say okay we'll give you global admin access and they'll give you global admin access and you and you have that forever it's never deactivated and yeah. imagine if you get compromised <laughs> you know imagine uh, the company uh, will get compromised as well that you provided services let's say six months ago you know yeah. so I, mean, I, I I remember for one of the gigs that I worked for a customer I think. Uh, it was it was in my previous organization, I think, and then uh, um, they were very reluctant to give any at any level of admin access, which simply meant that anything that required a SharePoint administrator to do in an Office 365 tenant perspective, I will have to outline step by step instructions on this is what needs to happen. This is click on this, click on this, click on this, whatever, and then the SharePoint administrator or the IT administrator in the organization will just will do that and get back. Of course, it's going to there's more turnaround time and then you need to factor in the amount of time it would have taken to do it yourself and getting someone to do. But at the same time, outlining things that needs to happen. So, uh, yeah, it's just one of those things. Yes. Yeah. So so that's that's too extreme. Right. So now if you yeah. actually say that uh, here is the least privilege access, uh, like Stefano said there before, yeah. uh, this is what I need to do exactly. This, I, I don't need global admin rights. I don't need access to your exchange. I don't need access to your uh, teams. Yeah. All I need is the uh, SharePoint service admin access. Uh, so give us give, give me that and you're, you're set. And, and then you can yeah. actually have MFA turn on even for the service admins and mm -hmm. and, and go from there. Yeah, and look, it's not just for the global admin role. This applies also to any role in the organization. Uh, just to mention very briefly, uh, Chandra and I uh, currently working for a local council. When I say local, this is a podcast, so it is uh, here in Victoria, in, in Australia. And uh, we are mapping AD groups to SharePoint groups. And typically, uh, groups in Active Directory are after your job title, your job role. And uh, the SharePoint groups are not necessarily driven by your job role, but mostly by the permission, what you can actually do in the system, irrespective if you are the CEO of the company or uh, you know the, the, the PR or the marketing person or whoever other role you have in your organization. So there is an exercise of mapping that doesn't necessarily reflect your job title. And this is a strong recommendation 
application that uh, I would like to give, uh, um, which is uh, think uh, security from an application perspective, not necessarily from the organizational structure. Whatever yeah. your job title is, uh, doesn't necessarily reflect uh, in permission that you should have uh, on the system that you're working on. Don't assume that your CEO or uh, your uh, president has global admin access just because of their job title. So always map in function of the role that they have within the application and and, and the task that they have to accomplish. Yeah, that's yeah point. absolutely, Thanks. man. That's 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 a, a real good tip. I've I've seen instances of CEOs having global admin rights. Uh, <laughs> Why? <laughs> you just need one account to be cracked, and that's it. Uh, exactly. The whole of company organization is compromised. Exactly. Hey, uh, hey, Stefano, you did mention something about a zero uh, yeah. trust. Zero trust. Was, yep. zero yep. trust. So, can you can you talk us about that, and also understand you have a demo to show us too? Yeah, look, uh, more than them, I have a few slides, so why not uh, sure. uh, sharing that now, which uh, I'm, uh, oh, one second, share, uh, where is the, oh, here we go, share the screen and uh, start this uh, beautiful presentation here. Oh, nice. And uh, here we go, so zero trust. Zero trust is actually not just a technology, but is a, uh, a movement, a methodology, uh, basically saying trust nobody. Mm -hmm. So don't automatically trust anything inside and outside uh, the perimeter of your organization. So don't trust people, don't trust devices, don't trust vendors, don't trust your CEO. So uh, because everybody can be compromised in some way. You know, we talk about social engineering, we talk about phishing, malware. Uh, 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 but even the circle of trust, you know, someone yeah. inside the circle of trust can compromise. And I have a few examples actually now that I will show you how uh, some security have been compromised by your closest friend as well. And uh, the second principle is verify everything, verify identity, verify permissions, verify that someone is actually allowed to have access to the resource that you I have asked that you know that they are uh, accessing. So zero trust uh, is a methodology to start uh, uh, this uh, concept of uh, give the least privileges possible before yeah. doing a any task. A few examples, and uh, this is not to shame to name and shame organization. This is public knowledge has been there. Uh, you know, is you can easily find on internet. But a few years ago, eBay was compromised. Uh, for a report attack for millions and millions of users. And, uh, and the reason was that just three employees have access to the, this uh, no, uh, massive amount of uh, contact. And it took only, you know, the, only these three employees to be compromised to reveal 145 million names, address, date of birth, password. So it started with three people and it got to millions and millions of records compromised. Yeah. The other one is LinkedIn. They got actually hacked twice, 2012 and 2016. And, uh, and this is again coming from the social engineering uh, uh, space because uh, they have yeah. been uh, attacked using this uh, practice. So someone called uh, uh, someone in LinkedIn uh, using the connection that they have on LinkedIn itself, uh, the knowledge about the profile that they got from the social yeah. network itself. Uh, so they use uh, the power of LinkedIn to hack LinkedIn itself. How fun is that, right? Yeah. And, um, and the third one is Marriott, you know, the hotel chain. This actually, uh, uh, was a, 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 a breach that occurred by acquiring uh, a, a, another uh, branch, another brand. So it was basically a result of a merge and acquisition. So um, Marriott itself was okay, was secure, but then they acquired the Starwood brand, which was compromised. And uh, w during the process of merging, their systems, they brought also this malware 
inside their own system. So trust your friend? No, not at all, yeah. because they That's thought right. that they were uh, consolidating uh, systems and making everything more secure. And actually, it's a sort of a Trojan horse you know, that they brought inside. So the it's, the it's amazing party. how they can actually stay in the system for so long, uh, for yeah. four years, is it? Uh, for four years, that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, no, and no one realized because probably they this M and A process, the merge and acquisition process, the digital transformation they went through took several years until yeah. it was completed. So the zero trust principles are uh, always identify the user. We mentioned about multi-factor authentication. So the the first type of authentication is something that you know. Uh, you yeah. know your username and password. You know your PIN code. Okay, simple as that. Oh, then the second step is something that you have. So you have uh, maybe a, a mobile phone, so I can send you a, a, an SMS with a, a code. Uh, you have a dongle or you have an authentication app. So something that uh, even if your username and password is hacked, is compromised, but because you receive this code on a device that you actually have, then uh, even no, the, the, the username and password will be wouldn't be enough to, to sign in. Yeah. Uh, there is also a third stage, which is something that you are. So you are whatever you are, like uh, uh, your voice, uh, your um, your fingerprint, you know, so uh, your biometric uh, information. So something that uh, yourself own and cannot be, you know, uh, share with anybody else. So this is why on uh, your phone, there is a typically fingerprint uh, 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 authentication. You don't have to yep. enter a pin code. You don't have to enter a username and password. You just tap uh, your fingerprint and you are in. And I remember working on uh, some form of biometric uh, uh, security system for access to some buildings where your camera can uh, scan your face, uh, a microphone can capture your voice, uh, recognize uh, uh, face and voice, and then authenticate you using this biometric information. Yeah. Uh, uh, even as simple as, uh, for example, uh, even the Authenticator app, the Microsoft Authenticator app can actually does a bit of bio, bio, bio security, biometric security as well. Because on so my iPhone, uh, you know, I use Face ID, um, and especially use Microsoft Authenticator for multi-factor authentication for all my Office 365 uh, logins, right? So when I get asked to log in, uh, when I put in a key, it also does a biometric scan of my face mm -hmm. to make sure that it is who I am, uh, who's getting the PIN, the MFA. So that's another added level of uh, authentication to on top of, uh, on top of uh, MFA as well. Exactly. And look, I find the fingerprint extremely convenient because uh, no one else uh, can take, uh, can use my phone. Even if I lose a device, you know, like the picture that we have seen before, someone had lost that device. Uh, because the device is encrypted, or all the data is encrypted and can only be accessed using my fingerprint, unless someone comes and cut my finger off, uh, then they really don't have uh, access to the device in any possible way. Yep. Uh, we mentioned about pulp, the principle of least privilege. So just give the permissions that you need to accomplish your task and nothing more than that, and also nothing less. So you don't want to be on the way of productivity, but you don't need to give uh, uh, more permission than what you actually need. If you're doing an audit, you need a reader. You don't need uh, an admin. It doesn't have to make any change. You're just auditing the system. So just give global reader uh, permissions and in general, any other role. Uh, and then uh, uh, an interesting uh, angle of uh, the zero trust principle is that uh, actually is a proactive looking for anomalies in the usage of system using sort of machine learning uh, statistics to identify whether someone has access uh, to, to information, for example, on your SharePoint system that they shouldn't have, and uh, they don't realize initially, especially if there is only some occasional 
uh, unauthorized access, but over time, then you can make this uh, detection of anomalies, someone that uh, some groups of people over a specific time or a specific kind of information that is uh, more and more uh, sort of, uh, uh, you know, uh, being accessed and uh, it represents an anomaly in the overall, uh, uh, yep. you know, way of using the, the, the information. And uh, yeah, and uh, the last thing um, I want to mention is uh, Microsoft, not uh, to make any promotion to Microsoft here, but just to help uh, the community to do a sort of a self-assessment on the maturity of your uh, uh, network or your device, or your identity management system, or your applications. Microsoft has a zero trust framework, which uh, you, you can easily find just by searching for Microsoft Zero Trust Framework that will help you, will guide you by answering a few questions on identifying the maturity level of your identities, devices, application, infrastructure, data, and network. So you yeah. get started, answer a few questions, and at the end you get a score that will tell you, hey, you are 50% uh, secure, you are 80% uh, secure, and this is the recommendation what you should uh, Absolutely. So do to make that's it better. The, that's the secure score uh, thing, isn't it? Correct. Uh, and, and, uh, and IT admins should really be, uh, if you want to empower your users uh, for working remotely, you need to be on top of the secure score and to have that assessment done and, and follow through on the guidelines uh, given to you by Office 365 uh, wizards. You did also mention the thing about anom anomaly dis uh, detection. Mm -hmm. um, and in the Office 365 space, there are some neat tools out there in the Azure space to do threat hunting or you know threat analytics and insights and things like that. So it is time now that everyone is working from multiple locations, it is more than important for us to go and start looking at implementing those sort, sort of uh, practices within our organizations. Thanks for yes, that. Uh, uh, look, all, always in, in the interest of uh, uh, sharing with the community, which is all this podcast about, right? Uh, yes. Let me let me go back one second here. Uh, I used to write for the Microsoft MSDN magazine before they shut down, and I did write a couple of articles exactly about this, rest restricting side access with uh, machine learning, with cognitive yeah. services, and biometric security information. So you know, if you go into the article, you see exactly the things that we are talking about, how to protect access using swapping a card, uh, doing anomaly intrusion detection, uh, capturing uh, vision uh, and speech, so your face right. and, and, and your voice. And there is a lot in there, uh, uh, including uh, the anomaly detection stuff somewhere in here, if I remember correctly. Here we go. So you know, the anomaly detection basically say, this is uh, the typical activity that people are performing average yeah. access per week, uh, and then there is uh, an anomaly out there. Someone has uh, more access than usual to this kind of information, what's going on in that. So for example, let's let's put this into real time uh, example. So in your organization, if all your, if all your people are accessing your stuff remotely, uh, remotely and within Australia or within Victoria or within Melbourne region, uh, and suddenly you see a login come from say uh, Russia or China or, or, or India or anything like that, then Italy. that's the Italy, for example, and that's the fraudulent attack, isn't it? That's yes. exactly, yeah. Exactly. And there's conditional exactly. access for that to, to resolve. Um, yeah. And especially now that every, no, nobody's actually moving, we're not actually traveling around, maybe mm -hmm. look at setting up conditional access to see to in order to, for, for you to prevent access from other other you know other countries or you know uh, that your normal remote workforce wouldn't do yeah uh, look a, a little digression but you know that this technique has been used also by government uh, to check if the lockdown is actually enforced because yeah. uh, we are all connected with our mobile device, so we are always uh, have a GPS on. Uh, information that is on Google Maps has been used not to go down to the individual, so there is no breach on the privacy of people, but more as a, you know, as a herd, as a, 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 a group, to see if people are actually enforcing the lockdown and not moving around, which is a, a great use of an anomaly detection uh, uh, you know, yeah. service yeah. system. 
Yeah. So, Fiona, share the links to that particular article you shared. I'll I'll put that into the into the uh, show notes as well. Cool. Cool. I think we're almost coming up on the on the hour now, um, or maybe we've uh, gone past it now. So, we just want to start wrapping the wrapping up um, yeah. the discussion. Um, so, Chenda, starting with you. Um, uh, I understand that SX IQ is is actually um, providing some services in this space for for businesses working remotely uh, right. in the security framework and things like that. Uh, can you just can you tell us how to get access to that or how to get access to you guys so that you know if businesses are interested to do that security reviews? Sure. Oh yeah. Um, in fact, uh, as we speak, we are. Uh, in touch with a number of our clients to actually do the security assessment. And because now is the time where organizations have just, some of the organizations have just realized that, oh my God, what do we do now? Um, we have to make this switch or we just have to make it happen. So um, our chief information security officer is on his toes and um, he's extremely busy and he's working with a number of our clients as we speak. And I believe, uh, Stefano himself is actually uh, working with one of our clients again as we speak. Um, so, I mean, the best way to reach out is, uh, yes, of course, uh, uh, through Stefano, I would say, because he's actively part of that security assessment area. Sure. And uh, he's going to put us put, put people in touch with the uh, chief information security officer if required. And then, yes, of course, um, we are actively helping our clients in the space cool. right now. Cool. So I'll, I'll I'll put a link to uh, both Chandra's and uh, Stefano's uh, LinkedIn profiles as well if yeah, anybody sure. wants to get in touch. Uh, mm -hmm. It doesn't matter if uh, you're in Victoria, you're in New South Wales, yeah. or in yeah. here in Australia or New Zealand or, or anywhere else in the world. If you want to uh, speak to uh, any one of us, please do reach out and uh, we're more than happy to assist you in whatever way we can. Uh, with that said, I just wanted to uh, end the podcast on, on a on a on a lighter note by sharing something quickly. Just a second. Yeah. I, I still, was wondering, it's, it's, were you going to ask us to sing or something? <laughs> no, 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 no. Right. Uh, you see this, uh, uh, the this cyber threat. Um, oh, yeah. Can you see my screen? Yep. That's a yep. re real-time uh, dashboard. I don't know how real it is, how real-time it is. Uh, it's from uh, Kaspersky, uh, and uh, it actually tells you the amount of security at threats happening at the moment, right? Mm -hmm. So if you just just bring up Australia, I know with all the remote workforce, probably the number of threats should be going down. That's not entirely true. You can actually see there are active threats uh, uh, cyber attacks happening right now. So if you click on Australia, you can actually see that Australia is the number 17th most attacked country. Can you believe that? Mm. Uh, with the population of Australia, you would think that uh, maybe Australia will be around uh, in in the in the 60s or 70s uh, ranking or so, right? But no, it's it's one of those um, OECD company uh, countries which are mm. you know gets attacked. So cyber threats, uh, cyber attacks are are real. Okay. If if any any business out there, if any person out there thinks that they they won't get compromised, you know, it's just about time. Uh, so make sure that your your security is 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 sorted out. Um, can you guys guess uh, which is the country uh, with the least number of attacks at the moment? I, I couldn't guess that, but I was very curious to see what is it like in India. Okay, sort of, India. Let's, let's see. Yeah, there it is. Huh? See, India is in the middle of the mix. <laughs> oh, uh -huh. uh, there are uh, there are attacks within India as well. It's the twentieth country in the in the wow, list. Wow! Yeah. Oh. So Australia is even worse than that. And uh, Stefano, any guess on the the uh, the, the country which is uh, least attacked or with the less number of attacks? With the with with the, with the least attack. Well, in Hollywood movie, uh, the the bad guys are always the Russian because everything starts from there. Uh, you're wrong. Actually, click on Russia. It's the number one attacked country. So everyone is attacking Russia yes. at the moment. Yeah, yeah. So the get the the I think in my view the get the least attacked country is this guy here. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> of course. Yeah. Uh, yeah. See, I, I wanted uh, to guess, that, but I thought okay, it might be just silly. <laughs> 
So if you if you if 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 you're a business uh, with Office 365 or any business in Antarctica at the moment, you're okay. But you're everyone safe. else, everyone else needs that security assessment done today. And and they are completely okay from coronavirus too. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> when you yes. think about it, they are zero, right? Obviously. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's it, man. Um, so with that, uh, let's let's end this uh, podcast uh, episode now. Thanks for coming on the show, both of you, Chandar and Stefano, to share your uh, insights, knowledge on uh, on the security and also for the previous episode on Office 365 apps for for remote work. Uh, I'm I'm sure we'll we'll definitely bring you back on for more discussions on on you know technology. Thank you so Excellent. much, Jack. It's been an Thanks, absolute Jack. Thanks, pleasure. everybody. Yeah, I- Thanks. Um, there you have it. Uh, it is amazing and very insightful discussion with Stefano and Chenda from SXIQ. Next week, we will discuss on how to use Microsoft Teams to stay more productive when working remote. Please subscribe to the show for more interesting content on Office 365 Modern Workplace uh, User Stories. This is Jay Kakarlapuri from Modern Work signing out. Stay home and stay safe. Thank you, everybody.